Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net. Today I want to talk about infections. Officially, an infection is defined as the invasion of the body by microscopic organisms. You know that. A pathogen is any agent that can cause the disease. Pathogens cause injury to tissues by producing toxins that cause damage in various ways. Now, now, not every microbe is a pathogen. In fact, some are beneficial or even necessary for human life, such as many intestinal bacteria. Pathogens are often carried by vectors from the Latin word vectus, one who carries. And these are humans or animals or microbes that carry and transmit a pathogen to others, to hosts. A vector does not have to be ill to carry a disease. A mosquito, for example, carries the organism that causes malaria in humans, but doesn't experience the disease itself. Typhoid Mary was a domestic servant that carried typhoid fever to many other people without feeling sick herself as well. Now, the elimination of a vector from the environment, giving Mary her pink slip, for example, usually ends the epidemic. Now, there are a number of different pathogens that cause infectious disease, and perhaps the one we hear most about is bacteria. Bacteria were among the first life forms on Earth and are present everywhere from the soil to the bottom of the ocean to the inside of your body. They may even exist on Mars. Now, if you took the entire population of bacteria on the planet, they would have a mass greater than the entire plant and animal population combined. By the way, the word bacteria is the plural form. A single bacteria is called a bacterium. Bacteria have a number of shapes that ranging from spheres to rods to spirals. When bacteria reach a certain size, they reproduce by splitting in two, a process called binary fission. I'm sure you all saw it in science class in junior high. Now, many bacteria are good guys. Some, however, are pathogens and cause infectious diseases, including cholera, syphilis, anthrax, leprosy, bubonic plague, while the list goes on. The most common fatal bacterial diseases affect the lungs, mostly, with tuberculosis alone alone, killing about 2 million people a year, mostly in underdeveloped countries. Now, there are many different types of bacteria. Most bacteria don't need to enter the host cells to reproduce. In other words, they do fine floating around in your blood. Now, a subgroup of bacteria is called rickettsia, and they depend on entry, growth, and reproduction within a host cell. Now, rickettsia are the cause of typhus, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, and a number of other infectious diseases. Rickettsia, however, do not cause rickets, which is a deformity of long bones in young children, usually caused by vitamin D deficiency. Although many bacteria have become resistant to certain antibiotics, they can be killed by them in most cases. Different bacteria are sensitive to different antibiotics. Now, you'll find out more about each antibiotic in a lot of our other videos on this same channel. Now, viruses are microscopic pathogens that, unlike most bacteria, can reproduce only inside living cells of other organisms. Viral particles that don't have a host are called virions, and they only act as a living organism when they enter a host cell. As a matter of fact, they stretch the definition of life itself. Viruses can infect all types of hosts, from animals and plants all the way down to bacteria. Example of common human diseases caused by viruses include the common cold, influenza, chicken pox, rabies, hepatitis, herpes, Ebola, and Zika. They can be spread by mosquitoes and other vectors, airborne droplets and coughs or sneezes, contact with blood or other bodily fluids, and ingestion of contaminated water or food. A normal immune system often can kill the infecting virus. However, some viruses evade these immune responses and result in chronic infections, such as HIV or hepatitis C. There are antiviral drugs, but note that antibiotics have no effect against viruses. It's important to know that. Let's talk about protozoa. Protozoa are one-celled microbes that step up on the scale as they exhibit animal-like behavior, such as the ability to move around. Many have a tail-like appendage called a flagella that they whip around so they can travel. They are restricted to moist or aquatic environments. Therefore, transmission is mostly by drinking contaminated water, although some are transmitted by animal vectors. Protozoa cause infectious diseases in humans, such as malaria, giardia, some dysenteries, sleeping sickness, and amoebiasis. A common vaginal infection is caused by a protozoan called trichomonas. 
Protozoa are usually susceptible to treatment with certain antibiotics such as metronidazole, also known as fishzole in, in, in its veterinary equivalent. A fungus, or in its plural form, fungi, include microorganisms such as yeasts and mold. Fungal infections most commonly affect skin and mucous membranes like the oral cavity and vagina, but can invade other areas in individuals with weakened immune systems. They are treated with antifungal medications in topical or oral form like Lotrimin. We'll talk more in detail about all these critters and a lot of other topics in future videos. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. If you have additional advice for us, please feel free to post it in the comments section below. This is Joe Alton, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like this video, make an old man, me that is, very happy by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Dr. Bones Nurse Amy, following us on Twitter at Prepper Show, and joining our Facebook group pages at Doom and Bloom or Survival Medicine Dr. Bones Nurse Amy. And don't forget, Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits are at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. Fill those holes in your medical storage. Thanks again.